Okay, so I'm on. I have. I'm watching like TV last night, and I happen to be on NBA TV, and I'm thinking I'm watching like that Title Nine or Title Five documentary. I think it's about women's basketball. It's not, well, I don't think I know it's about, but it was actually a new documentary, um, documenting the 25 years of the WNBA, and I would say overall it was good. I learned. I'm going to do another deeper breakdown of it, but this one I just want to point out what stood out to me. I learned about um, a, a woman's player getting drafted to the Pacers, in which I didn't know, didn't know. I had heard about it being two leagues as far as women's leagues, and I think it was a few leagues before that. <clears throat> I don't think I knew they was going on simultaneous, simultaneously. I think it was the ABL with the WNBA. But the big thing that stood out to me, Again, I'm gonna go back into everything later on. I got I need to watch it like one more time. But the big thing that stood out to me was where was Cynthia Cooper? Like, if you look on the screen, the documentary features more than 30 interviews, full list of interviewees. Hold on, let me go up a little bit. NBA TV premieres as we rise 25 years of the WNBA by Nike. So this is a Nike documentary. The one-year documentary airs Saturday, May 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. The WNBA past and current players, coaches, executives, and more share their perspective and insight on making of on the making of the W. I am looking forward to Cappy Pondexter's Dexter's segment. And then this is a list of everybody: Sue Bird, Juana Bond, and Gary. Cavalli, Tina Charles, just all of the big names, Asia Wilson, Tina Thompson, Diana Taurasi, Cheryl Swoops, Arikyo Gumbawale, Cheryl Miller, uh, Brittany Griner, Becky Hammond, Lisa Leslie, Rebecca Lobo. You know what? Where's Maya Moore? I'm tripping. I'm, my, how, how y'all got a documentary without Maya? Wow. Is, is the WNBA mad at? Now, what did Maya Moore do? Now, I understand they, well, I don't understand because I don't think you can have a WNBA documentary without uh, Cynthia Cooper. How? How? Like, regardless, I'm not. I'm not condoning. I'm not condoning what she, what she allegedly did or said to when she was coaching. What she's in trouble with in hot water. We've heard the stories. I, I don't know of any punishment that has come from it yet, but I'm not condoning it. I'm just saying, how can you have a documentary about the formation and growth and how we got to today? History is history. You can't exclude somebody from history. That was the biggest part. You had her whole team. You was talking about the Houston comments and how they got to this point and everybody they drafted. But you don't mention the finals MVP for all those championships, the, the first dynasty. Like, I don't know if you're planning to come back for a part two. But a, a, in my opinion, opinion a, a part two is definitely necessary because you're not telling the whole story. You can't tell the whole story without this person right here, 2010 Hall of Famer Cynthia. Come on, man. It's like we have to understand context. Now, if she touched somebody the wrong way or something like that, but I think you still just got to tell the story, man. She, she did something great. She might have also later on did something that hurt her team that she was coaching and a lot of the younger players and affecting their mental health. And if all of that stuff did happen, there needs to be an apology. And also uh, understanding that there was a time that she, she came up in California and she came up in Chicago, two rough environments, especially at that time. She said she was playing with a lot of men. We understand the talk that goes on on these courts and, you know, locker room talk. I mean, if you had Jordan's locker room, are you still not going to show the light? Are you going to exclude Jordan from all? It's, it's, 
it just doesn't make sense. If you're going to tell the story, tell the story. You don't have to go on and become a great person or say that you're endorsing everything that this person went on to do. But you understand, even today we hear about the toxic WNBA locker rooms, especially for women that don't want to participate in a certain life. So that a lot of stuff is still going on crazy and wild today. We can't pick and choose. We have to educate accept apologies when people want to grow from certain situations and just be understand that nobody's perfect. I don't think she may have, it's possible. I'm not going to say, I don't think she may not have understand how she was affecting certain players and certain stuff like that with different things. She was saying, she just might've been so accustomed to the locker room being so rough and just how she came. That just was the culture at that time. And sometimes people carry that culture on to different generations when that's no longer acceptable in the new generation. But it was a point of time where that could have been just common, how people move, talk, spoke, but time changed. But everybody don't know that the times have changed. You know, so I just thought, I like the overall concept. I like the documentary from what I've seen. I like the breakdown of history, the different perspectives. Uh, 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 Cheryl Miller and Reggie speaking how she just had nothing to transition to when she was finished and how this thing grow, grew and how they went on a 52 and O street before the 96 or 7th uh, Olympics in Atlanta. I like all that, but I just don't think, and even for the players to play it on the comments, I think that they should have maybe, I don't know if they did, but if they didn't, man, fought a little harder on signing off signing off without the last piece because i don't think you have a totally credible documentary without cynthia cooper who was so accomplished in the wnba being like i said you talked about these finals in this dynasty but you didn't talk about the finals mvp and that's just like talking about the bulls but never mentioning michael jordan and I just noticed Maya Moore was gone, so I'm not sure if the league was mad at her for that, but I don't know how you – I mean, to me, those are the two goats. I understand they shot it. It's crazy how some people can do so much less and get a logo, and and, and I'm not saying that, that she not good and stuff, like win less championships and all. Like You got the longevity. Yeah, all, we, we acting like Maya couldn't have played as long. Like, it's not like everybody was in position. She's – came into the WNBA at 30, 32, man, come on, man. We, these biases in certain sports, it'd be crazy, like, we, we know who the GOAT, man, we know who the GOAT is, like, like let's stop playing this game, but some people just gotta do so much less, I don't care how long you play, like, you, you played this long, you still ain't accomplished with this person, like, eh. I don't know, I don't like that, man, I don't like that, I'm just, I'm, I'm about salute in history and giving people their proper even if i might not care for you but i still gotta eat like give you that respect like nah i mean me and so and so went on the best of terms but they like that for real happy birthday cynthia super cool cooper this is what the all decade 14 did and in for and forced in the first four seasons of the WNBA, four championships, four finals, the MVPs award, three scoring titles, and two MVP. I mean, how you lead this person out of the documentary just makes no sense to me. Just makes no sense. We need a part two. And part two has to have the real ghosts of the WNBA, Coop and Maya Moore. And until then, I don't know if I can. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But shout out to Nike for that documentary. It's, it's definitely still needed. That's just that just would be something I would change. I, I think you got to make that right right there.